Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and this is a flat tour video. So before we get to the tour, I'm going to give you a quick bit of context. I live in a two bedroom late Victorian flat on the south coast of England, which I moved into in February of 2020. Now, I'm not sure if you remember anything about what was going on at that time in history, but it wasn't long after moving into this flat that the world went into lockdown and I found myself in a half functioning flat in a town where I didn't know anybody, which was an interesting turn of events for me. And what did I do with that time? Well, like any sane person, I of course filmed a YouTube tour of my new home and it was of course very terribly done. Luckily though, it does mean that I have at least some usable footage of the flat when I first moved in, which I will be harvesting and splicing into this video. Let's get on with the tour. We're gonna start off in the downstairs hallway. And first I'm gonna put in footage from 2020 of my downstairs hallway so you can see what it looked like then. Welcome, it's my front door, which I haven't been going out of. I've got this really nice crunchy brown carpet. <laughs> This is the hallway from the other angle. This side of the wall is panelling, which once it's not so crappy, will look really nice. Got some ceiling roses. One of them is missing. Floating paint. The big reveal. And as you may be able to see, not a huge amount has been done in the last four years down here. This panel wall literally hasn't been touched because I do think I want to do this a colour colour, but what colour I don't know. And even this hasn't changed, this beautiful flaking design. The only real thing I did manage to achieve in the last four years is pulling up the floor to reveal what is quite a broken and fucked up floor underneath it. Sadly they're not salvageable. I don't know what I want to do on the floor down here, possibly just paint those and replace these or put matting here it's kind of one of those jobs i'm avoiding the other thing i've had done down here is i had this shelf installed because i thought it would be a handy place to have things and so far all it's got on it is an empty letter rack and a print that's falling down in its frame that's my meter box up there i'm excited to do something to this space but i really don't know what it is i want to do i love the window above the door and i think i want to put some sort of colored window film up there and then paint a colour, I think. I need to fix the missing ceiling rosette still. It's so um, dusty and spidery that I kind of just avoid it. So that's the state of the hallway. And this is a job and a video that I hope you will see sometime this summer. I'm going to be working on it next after the toilet. This is the view up the stairs. The radiator landing is a good place to stand and peek out of the front door. If I think that postman's coming, I do this. Is that something? Look at that. The ugly light leads up to the skylight, which is a nice thing to have, only this one is covered in bird shit and cobwebs. There's also quite a lot of damp staining from the roof which needs some work but that's easily ignored for the time being. It's gonna be hard to clean or paint this hallway because it is so tall and I don't know if I trust myself with ladders over these many stairs but that's a problem for another day. I've got the first of many creepy brown handprints over here and then in the cupboard which doesn't have a handle but it does have a hole. Oh. I did not know how much paint was up there, now I do. Gas me a little bit of carpet. Here's my hallway now. I ripped up all the flooring from the stairs and they've been sanded and primed, although they're now covered in dirt because I did the priming like over a year ago, so I won't need redoing. I am actually having someone come over to quote me for stair runners, which is gonna be probably expensive because there's a lot of stairs in this flat, as you will see. And in the old video, there was quite a lot of damp and whatnot on this ceiling, which has mostly gone. Skylight's still got cobwebs on it. But I now do have some art up on the walls in here. Things are kind of just plonked. In the rooms that aren't done done in my eyes, stuff is just where it is. I have this here, which is like a wool covered canvas. 
that I made a while ago and that's there to stop the cat from going downstairs. I think at some point I would like to get some sort of actual gate thing but that works for now. So once you're up those stairs you can either turn one way bump into the litter tray and my afghan hound on the way and go up this little flight of stairs to the bedrooms or you can turn the other direction and take these stairs up to the kitchen kind of a split level flat i also have here my park bin which is a bin manufactured by my family back in the day and i need to do something with it but the moment it just lives there as you can see this bit has probably the most amount of traffic because it joins all the three stairways and it's just gotten so mucky obviously again that's just been primed i never painted it so i think what i'm going to do on this little landing is re-sand it prime it paint it and then get some sort of plastic matting i don't want to carpet this bit because of the litter tray i don't want it to get all littery you can also see the banister is in really bad condition. It's all covered in loads of stuff. So at some point I'm going to strip that back and refinish it as well, which I think will make a big difference. The art on the walls in here is a combination of homemade, gifted and thrifted. Ooh, rhymey. This big one I love. I got that from a secondhand painting shop. This is an old postcard I stole from my parents' house. This is a painting that my sister did of me when she was a teenager. I really love how light and airy this hallway is and it can only get better once it's actually finished. That will be a future video which you will have to subscribe to see. So here we are in the upstairs hallway. Up here has had quite a lot done to it. It's all been painted white. All of the exterior of the doors up here have also been painted pink. But there's still plenty that needs doing up here. So at the moment I have this clothes rack at the top of the stairs. Which has all my coats on it because I have a lot of coats. And it's there because there isn't really anywhere else sensible for me to put it that's not in the way. And you don't hang out in a hallway so it doesn't matter so much if it's cluttered. But that being said... It is still a bit of a nuisance being there. So the plan eventually is to relocate all of these coats onto hooks on the downstairs hallway wall. And basically I can collapse this and not have a rail up here because it would be nicer if it was open. Also this rug was basically like the only rug I could find during lockdown. And I really don't like it. But it's there for the time being. Painted the side of this with blackboard paint. Although I did not a picture of it the other day and chipped the paint so I need to redo that and I put a hook here for my smaller ladder. Inside of this cupboard you will find an assortment of things including my hoover, cat litter, cleaning stuff, loo rolls, cardboard that I moved in here in my recent art room makeover and that's got Christmas stuff in it. And then I got spare duvets and things up there. I've got some art that's fallen off the wall both there and there and I've got a really high piece of painter's tape stuck up there which I can't get down. All in all we call this area a work in progress. Moving on. Do, 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 do. This is the bedroom. So this is where currently I have all of the stuff that I have in this flat so far. So this is where I'm living. It's got this gorgeous Marilyn Monroe wallpaper. There's issues with the roof, so I have a massive damp patch. Over here, we've got my collection of mirrors. This is my bed or my mattress, I should say. So this is where I sleep. My armchair, that's where I sit. Clothes, a few holes in the wall. More handprints on the wall, just above where I sleep. Here we are in my bedroom. This room has not really changed since I did my two-part bedroom makeover video last year. And I love how it turned out. The two rooms in this flat that I consider done done are the two rooms that I've got videos about. So that's this room and my art room. I encourage you to watch that video for all the DIYs, including my grassy embroidered rug, the upcycled curtain tie backs and pelmet, my bed canopy, the alcove, etc, etc. This is Sunday. She's an important part of the household and this is her favourite room in the flat. Let me give you a quick show around. So we've got the bed with the canopy. I wanted a lot of art and colour in this room, which I think I achieved. DIY paper mache light fixture. 
I got this beautiful rug that my parents always had in their house and gave to me. I've got this amazing blanket which my gran made with her gran and now I have it. Love this cushion, that's from a charity shop. My incredible crochet wall hanging, which I wish I could say I made, but I didn't, it's from eBay. A matching cat bed that I made for Sunday. Haunted child painting, again eBay. Little tiny lamb from a charity shop. Then I've got the Daisy DIY that I did for this old gas pipe. This wardrobe was one of the first big kind of more expensive items of furniture that I bought. It's perfect for someone like me who both has a lot of clothes and also likes looking at their clothes. From my bed I can see all of my different knitwear. As much as I love vintage furniture, the wardrobes are just too tiny. Let me give you a quick wardrobe tour. So over this end I've got all of my dresses. Underneath I have a tray, oh that is so dark, of folded trousers. Here I've got skirts, these are all kind of tops that require hanging, jackets, I've got some more skirts, shorts, trousers, jeans and my beautiful array of knitwear. This is honestly my pride and joy. We've got tops, pyjama bottoms and whatnot and then the bottom one's full of t-shirts. So yeah, that's the bedroom. It's just a really dreamy, calming space, in my opinion. Someone else might think otherwise, but I love my bedroom. It's the next day. I had to stop filming yesterday because my camera died and then by the time it was charged, the light had gone. So you could not see the things I was talking about. But I'm back today to finish off the tour. Yesterday, we got as far as the bedroom. Here it is again today looks much the same and now we move on so we've got the bedroom right next door to the art room this is the spare bedroom you can see my entire bathroom suite is currently in here because my bathroom was supposed to get done two days ago or start getting done two days ago and that's obviously been cancelled this mantelpiece just slots right off and then this wall is all covered in shine i'm not gonna do any kind of in-depth on this room because I've literally recently put out an hour and a half's worth of content about me making over this room. So that's the place to go if you want more in depth on this room. The only thing that's different since filming that video is that there's now a unicycle in here. This was in my living room and I've moved it in here. And before you ask, no, I do not know how to ride a unicycle. I have it because my mum went through a period of wanting to be a clown. And so she got a lot of clown related things such as this unicycle. And I would love to learn to ride it at some point. But yeah, that's there now. And this is the rest of the room. I have loved it since I finished making it over, but I know it needs to get messy again now because I've got lots of projects get going on for the rest of the flat. So yes, onwards we go. And then you come through to the toilet. So one unusual feature about the flat is that there's a bathroom with no toilet and a toilet with no sink. To get between the two, you have to walk through the living room. So you have to walk fair way to wash your hands, which isn't ideal. Beautiful loo roll holder there. Nice hole. This is my next big project that will be on this channel is the makeover of this room. As you can see, the walls and ceiling have all been re-boarded and plastered. Seemingly the guy was a bit messy and now I have all of these brown stains on my wall, which really isn't ideal in a toilet room. It just sends out the wrong energy. There's more down there as well and that just looks so sus. The toilet has been changed and a sink has been put in. This is a vintage shooting range poster that I got on eBay ages ago, partly because I just really enjoy her jacket. What a great colour. I'm going to blur out what she's holding because we don't endorse that on this channel. I got this toilet roll holder. This is a vintage Bakelite holder from eBay. I also got this vintage toothbrush holder from eBay and this amazing 1980s ceramic circular mirror. In terms of what I want to do in this room, I want to paint, possibly in blue, maybe some murals on the wall. I like the idea of doing a painted kind of stained glass effect on that blind. 
and I think I need to change the floor. But I'm going to go into more detail on all of this in the designated video coming up. That's my sad little toilet room. Let's hide it away in shame for now. And then we come through to the one room that has had some work. Well, it's the only room I've been doing stuff to, which is the living room. It's a um, really amazing room. Pretty vast. It's got amazing ceiling, which is the same as in the bedrooms. It looks significantly better than when I moved in. There was really horrible wallpaper on this wall and this cupboard was a bit of a state. So I've been focusing on like stripping things back, painting, spent a lot of hours stripping paint off these stairs and I've started repainting them. Show you the view down into it. I quite like that you have to step down into it. It feels like a swimming pool or something. If I was going to describe the decor style of this room, I would probably say it's chaotic grandma, which is particularly apt because I do have things from both of my grandmothers in this room. This painting was from one of my grands and this wedding dress was my nan's. It's really hard to know where to place furniture in this room because there's just something on most of the walls. It's like a thoroughfare between the front of the flat and the back of the flat so you can't block either of these doors there's a fireplace there's a built-in cupboard there's a window so it's tricky to arrange it and i've had this room in so many different configurations this is the current one i think the reality is that the furniture that i have in this room isn't kind of the ideal furniture for this room but the furniture that i do have is stuff that i love and that i will want in future homes like this really beautiful mid-century sideboard it's absolutely not a room that I would consider done. In fact, it's kind of become a dumping ground for lots of different things, including frames and stuff to go elsewhere in the flat. At the moment, I've just got this assortment of stuff chucked up on the walls. I quite like how shambolic this room is, to be honest. It feels cosy. It feels like lived in. This was actually a baby blanket that my aunt made me when I was born. This is one of my favourite cushions and this vintage pink velvet chair I got for free and it's really uncomfortable. Dead plant had to block off the fireplace even though it is like a really beautiful Victorian fireplace behind there but the top of it's broken and I'm worried that Sunday will scrabble up there so it's got a chalkboard with a sad face on it in front of it at the moment and then also just another little chair, some cushions and that cable reel which I'm going to DIY in an upcoming video. This built-in cupboard is my linen cupboard and it's got all of my linens as you would expect. Got this big floor-length mirror which I got from Maid. Little vintage bamboo stacking tables. This amazing mid-century rug is from a charity shop. Then that shag rug was from Maid, I think. I've got a really basic girl IKEA pendant. This is one of my favourite things that I have. This is a housewarming present that I got from a friend when I moved into this flat. And he's a vintage Italian spaghetti cat and his name is Harvey and I love him. This like illustration of a smarmy lion was my dad's and I pinched it from him. I just like how shady he is. These were made by my boyfriend's mum. And this postcard was a present from one of my friends who thought I would like it, and I do. And then the most important part of any living room, a slightly annoyed cat who wants to go back to sleep. Now we go up these stairs, into the hallway and into the past. And then this brings us through to this little hallway, nice. Someone was measuring themselves here. This is where the loft hatches. I haven't been up there, but apparently it's full of crap. I installed a baby gate here to stop Sunday getting in when she occasionally has a pissing spree. And at the moment I'm using an assortment of things to keep it shut because it doesn't have an actual latch. Now you come through this hallway. I painted this section pink and yellow. And at the moment, this is the most colourful bit of the flat. Even painted the roof hatch look. And I found this lampshade in the charity shop, which was the absolute perfect match for this colour scheme. Got this cat picture up here because that's how I imagine I'll be if ever someone pulls the ladder out from under me. Behind here, I've got my big ladder and some of my work overalls. 
Let There Be Light. And then you come to my beautiful bathroom. This really is a stunning room. This was my handiwork. I was trying to strip the wallpaper. The builders advised me to stop doing what I was doing because the sink and the radiator could fall off the wall. So now I just live with that. This is where I keep my collection of dust. Triangular cupboard, which is quite unusual. Apparently the pipes in here are made of lead. So this, Shower, it's been built onto the side of a cupboard, which doesn't seem that secure to me. Shower doesn't work, and the bath leaks, so I can't fill the bath properly. So here is my shower. I just fill it up, and I pour it over myself, which is super fun. The walls are black, as you can see. Cheery. Another notable feature is there's no door. There is no door on this room, so luckily I live alone, but still, just for the feeling of privacy would be nice to be able to be washing with a bucket and not feel like people could just peek around the corner. And here's the bathroom now. Certainly, it's an improvement on what was here before. There's no more black walls, no more half broken walls. There's a working shower with a big shower head, which we love. After six months of showering with a bucket, I cannot tell you how amazing it was to suddenly have a really good waterfall shower in my house. I also put these shelves up, which I upcycled from the top section of a Welsh dresser that I got for free. Then down here, we have a little vintage plastic mirror next to a tiled piece of work that I made at uni. This was all about bulimia actually, which is cheery. And this 40s like decorative jug, which I just love the colours of. The sink is one of my most treasured possessions because I carried this across London in a suitcase after winning it in an eBay auction. And I did not anticipate how heavy what is not huge of a sink would be. It was a mission, but I got it and I got it back and I got it installed in this flat. And I think it's beautiful. It just adds a pop of colour. I painted the attachments that came with it pink, which I think looks cute as well. I attached this to the wall for my toothpaste and stuff. And I've got them in this beef dripping pot. And then I've got this little vintage Wade wiggly pot that is genuinely perfect for keeping my electric toothbrush head in. So there's bits in here that are working well. It's just not fully realized yet. Also fuck bathroom scales. I think I should get rid of those too. The mirror my mum got for me from a charity shop because she found it for a pound. The clashes in the shades of green really intrigues me. I don't know. Then I put some towel hooks up there. I am ashamed to show you the state of the seal. I need to sort that out. I opted not to get an extractor fan installed when I had the bathroom done because I really couldn't afford it. And uh, I suppose I'm regretting that decision now. I also am considering painting a colour in here, but I don't know. This is what it looks like at the moment anyway. Again, the sink is the star of the show, so until I get on to the rest of it, it saves the day. This room will eventually be the kitchen, but it is at the moment just a room with a fridge. The floor is laminate, but it's been put down over the top of carpet. Finally, we get to the current kitchen, which is at the very back of the flat. It's petite. I did a massive clean in here when I moved in because it was truly disgusting. There's this mold area. It was all this wallpaper, which I think they'd chosen to match the tiles and it just looked like a headache in a room. This is the biggest transformation I would say because there was not a kitchen at all in here before and now there's a whole ass kitchen in here. Check it out. This kitchen I actually drew out a drawing of and I got a carpenter to build it for me and it worked out so much cheaper than getting a kitchen from any kitchen maker and I think it looks so cute. It's all open concept storage with a breakfast bar at the end. I got some nice shelves up there. These bar stools are also from a charity shop and they were £2 each. 
and they're great because you can fold them down so I can have them out of the way if I want to but I do keep them up when I got these I thought maybe they were going to be more decorative I actually sit on them all the time when I'm waiting for food to cook the window I had to half block off to have the unit here but I think it worked out well double Belfast sink I love it one of the reasons why this room was so perfect to turn into a kitchen is because it already has built-in cupboards. This one's mainly got Sunday's food in it, but also drinks at the top. And then this big one is like the perfect pantry type thing. So I've got all of my dried goods, baking stuff, spices. Looking at this, you might think, hey, she likes cooking, but it's a lie. I hate cooking. Down here... We've got cat box, bins, and suitcase storage. Still got the beautiful red fireplace there. And above it, I've hung this parasol that I got off eBay that says thank you on it. And I put a hanging light bulb behind there so that it's kind of like a nice moody lighting of an evening because I never like to turn on the big light. As you can see, we have a damp problem in this room and that's from issues with the roof which is due to be fixed next month but that's just a bummer that in the meantime we ignore got another lamp up the top here the evening lighting <coughs> got this rug from a charity shop for 20 quid look how big it is this is a photo of my parents kitchen with my park bin in it and then I also have this painting that I did of my mum in the kitchen and then we also have this which is one of my favorite things this was actually in my last house share in the kitchen and when I moved out I took it it's just a lady with all steam in her face so we're doing kitchen themed decor in the kitchen which is maybe a bit on the nose but who cares about that I have these really nice bamboo shaped drinking glasses which I think are vintage and these were also charity shop 50p each nice selection of charity shop magnets this little guy and this lady don't know who she is but she's gorgeous then I've got this which my boyfriend made of me for Christmas and I also have the matching catty which he made me last year for my birthday this is another beautiful thing I have in here, which is this vintage, I think it's 40s, jug. And it's got like a silvery spiderweb on it with flowers. So I keep that on my countertop, along with this French plate, which holds all of my washing up stuff. Little catty food section. Finally, going into what was the kitchen, we now have a beautiful matching utility room, which I also got a carpenter to make, but a bit later than I got the kitchen done for money reasons. And in here, I've got all of my laundry stuff, all of my DIY stuff, tools and whatnot, cleaning stuff, gardening stuff, and it does the trick. The roof issues also apply to this room too. I've got these D rails up here. Top one I use for spare coat hangers and the bottom one, when I'm drying clothes, I hang them there to dry. And then I've also got this vintage era, which I use as well. I bought this when I was 18 and moving to uni and my dad thought I was mad to get this vintage wooden one, but I've kept it ever since. These here are just cheap wooden magazine foils. You can get them from Ikea, but I've got most of these from charity shops. And I just use blackboard paint on the outer side and I keep all sorts of DIY stuff in it. So this one's got coke in it, as you see. And as you change what's in them, because this is blackboard paint and this is just chalk, you wipe it off and write a new label. Then I continued the same blackboard paint chalk pen thing with the rest of my storage for all my DIY stuff. I'm particularly proud of this. This is a box from a charity shop that came with all these sections, so I use it for my paint stuff. This is an amazing bag that my friend Sam made for me a few years ago. It's got 
a canvas inner and it's actually really sturdy. And then it's got carrier bags on the outside. And can you guess what I keep in it? More carrier bags. Swings there on that and hides my electric toothbrush charger. Genius. Then this horrible painting of me and my sister when we were teenagers. And um, I've got to say, it's low key offensive. My sister's eyes are not that close together and my eyes are not that far apart. I am as hammy as I look there though. I have no clue what to do with it. So it just sits on there looking haunted at the moment. Next to my moist sign. My camera's about to die, but I wanted to end this video sitting by my cat flap the way I ended the first one. Just to say thank you for watching. I hope I covered a good amount of things. I don't really know. This has been a chaotic filming day. So we'll see how it comes out. Please like and subscribe for more home content. I'm going to be doing over a lot of the spaces that you've seen in this video. So if you're interested in that, follow me.